بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today the author he teaches us باب صلاة العيدين باب صلاة العيدين The chapter wherein he's going to talk about issues pertaining to the two Eids Eid has the meaning linguistically of Ada Ya'udu something which comes about regularly something which returns often Islamically, it refers to the two celebrations that the Prophet ﷺ stipulated for us, which is Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. So anything apart from these two celebrations, which comes regularly in a fixed time and it returns year after year, then Islam doesn't allow you to celebrate that. If it's a one-off celebration, like for example, you want to celebrate your graduation, that's a different matter, that's permissible. But if you're going to celebrate something which comes year after year and you take it as a celebration, then the, Muslim, then the scholars of Islam, they do not allow that except for Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. وَهِيَ فَرْضٌ عَلَى الْكِفَايَةِ The Imam, he says, is fardun عَلَى الْكِفَايَةِ What does that mean? It's fard kifaya, not fard ayn It's a communal obligation according to the author, which means that if some people fulfill that obligation, then the obligation is removed from everybody else. If that obligation is not fulfilled by a group of people, then everybody in the community becomes sinful for not fulfilling the obligation. طيب. Imam Shafi and Imam Malik hold it to be sunnah mu'akkada, an established and confirmed sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Okay? And Imam Abu Hanifa and Ibn Taymiyyah, they hold it to be wajib. Wajib al ayn that every person has to pray that. So there you have the differences of opinions according to the scholars. The Imam, he says, إِذَا قَامَ بِهَا أَرْبَعُونَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْمِصْرِ سَقَتَتْ عَنْ سَائِرِهِمْ So according to the Imam's opinion, he said, it's فَضٌ عَلَى الْكِفَايَةِ So if 40 people in the community establish this prayer, then it's removed as an obligation from the rest of the people. طيب. So like Jummah, the author said 40. Also here in the Eid Salah, the author is saying 40. وَوَقْتُهَا مِنْ اِرْتِفَاءِ الشَّمْسِ إِلَى الزَّوَالِ and the time for this prayer is min irtifa' shams ila zawal. What does that mean? Exactly. So when the sun moves from the meridian, which is roughly 15 minutes before dhuhr, right? And we said irtifa' shams is 15 minutes after sunrise. So the time to pray the Eid Salah, according to the author, is between these two times. 15 minutes after sunrise to 15 minutes before Salat al-Dhuhr. If the community only came to know that it was Eid on that particular day after Zawal al-Shams, after the time of Zawal. What do they then have to do? They then have to make up this prayer the next day. For whatever reason, they only came to know that today was Eid. And they only knew this after the Zawal of the Shams. So then in this situation, the community has to make up the prayer the next day. <coughs> And the sunnah regarding the Eid Salah is to pray in the Musalla. So Alhamdulillah, in a Muslim country like this, you have places which are designated outside of the masjid, away from the masjid, to pray the Salah. And this is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ never prayed the Eid Salah in the masjid. Okay? So the exception to this is what? The sunnah is to pray it outside, away from the masjid, except where? Except for Mecca, due to the virtues that the Haram Sharif holds, okay? So if you were to pray the Eid Salah there, then that is valid and good. Otherwise, the Sunnah, the recommended act to do, is to pray away from the Masajid, to pray outside in one go, okay? To have the community all together, okay? In one area, in one Musalla. The Imam, says, وَتَعْجِيلُ الْأَضْحَى And to pray Adha, Eid al-Adha, the Salah, to pray it quicker, to pray it quickly. Why? Because the people want to go after the, afterwards to go and make the slaughter, right? And to distribute the meat. So in order for them to do that and then to carry on with the celebration of the day, it's recommended that the people pray the salah as early as possible. And to delay the Eid al-Fitr is so that the Fitr itself, the Zakat al-Fitr can be distributed amongst the Muslims, okay? So that everybody who needs that and requires that can benefit from that on the day of Eid. وَالْإِفْطَارُ فِي الْفِطْرِ خَاصَةً قَبْلَ الصَّلَاةِ 
and the Imam he says that to have something to eat on the Eid al-Fitr is specific to the Eid before the Salah that you should eat something before the Salah okay because in Sahih Bukhari Anas radiyallahu anhu he says about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يقضي يوم الفطر حتى يأكل تمرات that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم never used to leave the house on the day of fitr until he had eaten some dates okay so it's the sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that Eid al-Fitr you eat something like dates or something which resembles that before going to the salah the ulama they discuss from the wisdoms of doing this what is one of the wisdoms of eating something before you go to the Eid Salah on Yawm Al-Fitr, on Eid Al-Fitr? So as Ibn Hajj Al-Asqalani, he says, the main reason is that you are rushing to fulfill the command of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is to, it's to have Fitr from Ramadan. You fasted 30 days to differentiate now that that fasting is over and today you are celebrating. So therefore, it's recommended to eat before you go to the Salah itself. So people do not think that you have to keep fasting until the actual time of the Salah, because some people may think that. And the Imam says, وَيَسُنْ أَنْ يَغْتَسِلْ وَيَتَنَظَّفْ وَيَتَطَيِّبْ It's also recommended that the person makes ghusl and he does those things which are from cleansing oneself according to the fitrah, like removing any hairs, like cutting your nails, etc. And also that you take some uh, perfume if you have anything of that sort. Why? Because it's narrated in the Muatta of Imam Malik, that Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he said, that the Prophet ﷺ said, "Inna hada yom Eid, jālahu Allahu lil Muslimin. Faman jāil al Jumati, fal yaghtasil. Faman ka, fa in kana tībun, fal yamasa minhu. Wa alaykum bil sewak." The Prophet ﷺ said that this day is an Eid. It's a day of celebration that Allah has made for the Muslims. So whoever comes to the Jum'a, okay, then he should take a bath. Number one. And number two, if he has some perfume, he should use that perfume. And number three, upon you is to use the siwak. So of course we know that Jummah is the weekly Eid. And what applies to the weekly Eid in terms of adab applies to the annual Eid, okay, in terms of adab. So this hadith is something which reminds us and it's recommended that we take ghusl on the day of Eid. The ulama, they mention that ghusl on the day of Eid is not for the prayer. It's not for the salah, it's for actually the day itself, okay? It's for actually showing that you are celebrating a joyful occasion. That's why you take the ghusl for the day of Eid. That's why also it's also recommended for those women who cannot attend the salah due to whatever reason. Even them, they should take ghusl in their houses as an expression of joy for the day that we are celebrating the day of Eid, whether it be fitr or, or adha. Tayyib, the imam, he says, فَإِذَا حَلَّتِ الصَّلَاةِ تَقَدَّمَ الْإِمَامِ فَصَلَّ بِهِمْ رَكَعَتَيْنِ بِلَا أَذَانِ وَلَا إِقَامًا That if it's time, when it becomes time for the salah, then the imam, he goes forward and he prays the two rak'ah without an adhan, without an iqama. In Sahih Muslim, Sumra ibn Jundub radiyallahu anhu, he says, سَلَيْتُ مَعَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَمْ عَلْإِيدَيْنِ غَيْرَ مَرَّةٍ وَلَا مَرَّتَيْنِ Okay, he said, I prayed with the Prophet Sallallahu the two Eids. Uh, more than once, in fact, more than twice. Bila adhan wa la iqama. Bi ghayri adhanin wa la iqamatin. Without an adhan and without an iqama. So the sunnah for the Eid Salah is to pray without making the adhan and without making the iqama. Yukabbiru fil ula sab'an bi takbirat al-ihram wa fi thaniya khamsan siwa takbirat al-qiyam. The Imam, he says to us, that in the first raka'ah, you make seven takbirs, okay? Including the takbirat al-ihram. So after the takbirat al-ihram, how many takbirs do you make? Six, okay? And in the second raka'ah, you make five takbir after the takbir of standing up. So in the second raka'ah, how many takbirs? Six, okay? If you were to include the takbir for standing up. طيب. Seven in the first, five in the other. And this is upon the hadith in Abi Dawood, where Aisha radiallahu anha, she mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kana an Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yukabbiru fil fitri, bi sab'a takbirat fil ula, wa khamsa fi thaniya. Okay, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to uh, make seven takbir in the first rak'ah, and five in the second rak'ah. And the hadith is in Abi Dawood. There are other narrations, of different amounts of takbirat, but Imam Tirmidhi rahimullah ta'ala, he said that this is the most authentic. 
But by virtue of the fact that there are other narrations which are established that the companions did them, that means we shouldn't make inkar upon people who do other than what we've just mentioned. Inkar meaning you shouldn't make a prohibition upon them from doing what they are doing. If it's been established in certain ahadith that it was done in this particular manner, then we allow the people to do so. Allah knows best. And he raises the Imam and the people that are praying, they raise their hands with every takbir. Where do you raise your hands to? To your shoulders or to your earlobes or in between, right? To the shoulders, to the earlobes or in between. All of that is permissible and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. وَيَحْمَدُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَيُصَلِّ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بَيْنَ كُلِّ تَكْبِيرَتَيْنِ Between every two takbirs, the person praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you could say things like, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, La ilaha illallah, and you make salah upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Imam Tabarani and Imam Bayhaqi, they narrate this from the great companion Ibn Masudin radiyallahu anhu, that he used to do this. So between every two takbirs, you can make a dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's recommended, and to send salah upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ثُمَّ يَقْرَأُ الْفَاتِحَ وَسُورَةً And then, after doing those takbirat, you pray the Imam, he recites Surah Al-Fatiha, and he recites a surah after that. The sunnah is, as mentioned in Sahih Muslim, from Nu'man ibn Bashir radiyallahu anhu, who said, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهِ سَلَّمْ يُسَلِّي فِي الْإِيدَيْنِ وَالْجُمْعَةً بِسَبِّهِ اسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْأَعْلَى وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ الْغَاشِيَةِ That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray with سَبِّهِ اسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْأَعْلَى in the first raka and in the second raka, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ الْغَاشِيَةِ Or, according to other evidences, Surah Al-Qaf and Surah Al-Qamr. Okay, Qaf in the first and Surah Al-Qamr in the second. And the matter is, has wideness in scope. يَجْهَرُوا فِيهِمَا بِالْقِرَاءَةِ The Imam, when he recites, how should he recite? Quietly or loudly? Loudly, like in the Jummah, right? He wants the people to benefit from the recitation. So he recites loudly. فَإِذَا سَلَّمَ خَطَبَهِمْ خَطَبَ بِهِمْ خُطْبَتَيْنِ So when he makes the taslim, then the imam, he makes the khutbah broken into two parts, like in the Jummah. What's the difference here between the Salatul Jummah? Jummah is before the, uh, the khutbah is before the Salah. Eid, it's after the Salah. Tayyip, what if somebody does it like in Jummah? They make the khutbah before the salah. What do we say about this? Huh? You have to do it again afterwards. Huh? Anybody else? We say that this khilaf sunnah is opposing the sunnah, but the salah is valid. What he's done is opposing the sunnah, but the salah is valid. Why? Because one of the companions, Marwan, he did this, and the ones who made inkar upon him, the ones who told him that what you are doing is wrong, Sa'id, uh, Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, I believe, told him what you are doing is wrong, Yet he still prayed behind him, showing us that the salah is still valid. So he told him what you're doing is wrong, you shouldn't do it. But it wasn't a wrong which causes the salah to be invalid, okay? Or causes the Eid prayer to be invalid. In any case, the Imam, he says, فَإِن كَانَ فِطْرًا حَضَّهُمْ عَلَى صَدَقَ وَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ حُكْمُهَا If it's Eid al-Fitr, in the khutbah, the Imam, he encourages people to pay the zakat al-Fitr and he, he tells people about the rulings and he talks to people about the virtues of that zakat al-fitr. What do you find a bit problematic with this statement? Exactly. So the sunnah is to pay the zakat al-fitr before the Eid. Tayyib. So Shaykh Uthaymin and others, they said, Rahimullah, that it's better to make this khutbah the week before the Eid. So people can do it before that, right? But if people do pay the zakat al-fitr on the day, it's still valid. But it's khilaf al-awla. It opposes that which is better. That which is better is to do it before the Eid, so that it can actually reach the people who need it and they can use it. Tayyib? The Imam, he says, وَإِن كَانَ أَضْحَى بَيَّنَ لَهُمْ حُكْمُ الْأَضْحِيَّةِ And if it's Eid al-Adha, then likewise in the khutbah, the Imam, he reminds the people of the virtues of making sacrifice and the rulings pertaining to that. Perhaps somebody who forgot to do so will then go and rush and carry out the sacrifice. The extra takbirs in the salah 
and the two khutbah a sunnah. The Prophet sallallahu said, as in Abi Dawood, inna nakhtub. فَمَنْ أَحَبَّ أَنْ يَجْلِسْ فَالْيَجْلِسْ وَمَنْ أَحَبَّ أَنْ يَنْصَرِفْ فَالْيَنْصَرِفْ The Prophet Sallallahu said, we are going to make the khutbah. So whoever wants to sit and listen, let him sit and listen. And whoever wishes to leave and depart, then let him leave and depart. Showing that the khutbah is sunnah and the hadith is in Abi Dawood. And also the extra takbirat, as we mentioned, are also sunnah. So if somebody leaves them off, we shouldn't throw stones at them. We should understand that he left off a sunnah, which is not good. He should do the sunnah, but it's nothing to have an argument over. Okay? The Imam, he says, وَلَا يَتَنَفَّلْ قَبْلَ الصَّلَاةِ الْعِيدِ وَلَا بَعْدَهَا فِي مَوْضِعِهَا And you do not make nafal before the salat al-eid, nor after it, okay? In its place where you are praying it. Why? Because Aisha ibn Abbasin radiyallahu anhu narrates, as in Bukhari and Muslim, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kharaja yawm al-eid fasalla raka'atayn lam yusalli qablaha wa la ba'daha that the Prophet ﷺ came out on the day of Eid and he prayed two raka'ah. He didn't pray before that or after that, anything. But listen to the wordings of the Imam. The Imam, he said, fi mawdi'iha, That you don't pray any nafal in its place. So that means once you leave the place of Eid, if you wanted to pray Salat al-Duha or anything, you can do so. But in the Musalla itself, it's just the Salat al-Eid. Other ulama, according to Shaykh Abd Aziz al Rajihi in his explanation, they say that even if you come to the Musalla, you should pray Tahit al Masjid. Okay? Because the Musalla and the Masjid, they share rulings. Okay? What is the proof of that? According to these ulama, the proof is that the Prophet وسلم, he told all of the women that they should attend the Eid Salah. They should watch the celebrations and attend the Salah. And the ones who are suffering from the monthly uh, cycle, the ones who had Haid, he told them to abstain. Abstain from the Musalla, but not from the celebration itself. So they should watch from a distance. They should come, but stay away from the Musalla. Showing that the Musalla has rulings like the Masjid has rulings. That the one who has Haid, she cannot come into the Masjid. Likewise, she cannot come into the Musalla. So according to that opinion, then you can pray uh, two rak'ah like you would in the Masjid. But our author, he says no. Others, they say yeah, for that reason. وَمَنْ أَدْرَكَ الْإِمَامِ قَبْلَ السَّلَامِهِ أَتَمَّهَا عَلَى صِفَتِهَا Whoever catches the Eid prayer before the Imam makes the salam, assalamu alaikum, then he completes the prayer as he would have prayed with the Imam in the same way. Two raka with the extra takbirat. وَمَنْ فَاتَتْهُ فَلَا قَضَعَ عَلَيْهِ And the one who misses the salah, then there's no making up upon him. There's no qada for him. Why? Because it's not Fardu Ain, right? It's Fardu Kifaya. So he doesn't have to make it up. And then the Imam, he says, فَإِنْ أَحَبَّ صَلَّهَا تَطَوَّعًا If he wants to, he can pray it as an extra nafal, as something which is supererogatory, extra. إِنْ شَاءَ رَكَعَتَيْنِ If he wishes to do so, he can pray two raka'a. وَإِنْ شَاءَ أَرْبَعَ And if he wishes to do so, he can pray four raka'a. وَإِنْ شَاءَ صَلَّهَا عَلَى صِفَتِهَا And if he wishes to do so, he can pray it in the way that he would have prayed if he was with the Imam. وَيُسْتَحَبُّ التَّكْبِيرُ فِي لَيْلَتَيْ الْإِيدَيْنِ And it's recommended to make the takbirs in the nights of the Eid, after Maghrib. Okay, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. وَيُكَبِّرُ فِي الْأَضْحَى أَقِيبُ الْفَرَائِدْ فِي الْجَمَعَى And with regards to Eid al-Adha, following the obligatory prayers in congregation, you make the takbirat. Okay, but these takbirat, Number one, it's done if you're in congregation, congregation salah. Number two, the takbir itself is not done in unison, though naturally it would be in unison. There's a difference. You don't intend to do it in unison by following somebody making the takbir, but by, but by virtue of the fact that everyone's doing it at the same time, naturally it's going to fall into unison, right? But the intention is not to do it in unison. So either al-adha, after all of the uh, obligatory prayers, you do it. When does it start from? It starts from the Fajr of day of Arafah, Yawm al-Arafah, which is the ninth, right? And it continues to the day of Eid, which is the tenth. And then the next three days after that, it also continues until the fifth day of Asr. So the, the, on the fifth days of the Ayyam al-Tashriq, Salat al-Asr will be the last time you do it in congregation. So these are known as Takbirat al-Muqayyid. Al-Muqayyid meaning restricted, okay? They are for... Uh, 
from the ninth Yom Al Arafah, like we said, to the end of the Ayyam Al Tashriq, which is five days in total, every time you pray in congregation. But you also have Takbirat Al Mutlaq, open Takbir, okay, which is from the first of Dhul Hijjah till the five till the end of the Ayyam Al Tashriq, okay, and that can be done at any time, any place. And with regards to Eid Al Fitr, there's uh, Takbir Al Mutlaq from the Maghrib of the night before the Eid itself. The Imam he says, وَصِفَةُ takbir shafan, And the way to, to, to do the takbir is to do it in pairs. So you say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. So you made the takbir twice. These are the narrations where you make it thrice. Both narrations are authentic and whichever way you do it, it's all well and good. Al-amru fiha wasi'ah, there's lots of scope in the matter. So it's nothing to become upset over. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us understanding of this topic and to make it beneficial for us. I mean, anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any mistakes and shortcomings from myself and shaitan. If you have any questions on the topic, then feel free. Good. If Eid falls on the Friday, what's the ruling of praying Jummah, Salatul Jummah? This question has two parts, two rulings, right? It depends whether you are the Imam or it depends whether you are the Munfarid or if you're the one praying, the Ma'mum, sorry, the one praying behind the Imam. If you are praying behind the Imam and you've prayed the Eid Salah, then you don't need to go to the Jummah Salah. If you didn't pray the Jummah Salah, then you need to go. If you didn't pray the Eid Salah, then you need to go to the Jummah Salah. Again, so if you've prayed the Eid Salah, there's no need for you to go to the Jummah Salah. Okay, if you didn't pray Eid, you have to go to Jummah. Number two, the Imam, if he prays the Eid Salah, he still has to go to the Jummah Salah and establish it. Why? Because it's from the symbols of Islam which have to be established, okay? And those who want to attend will attend. That's the basic ruling. What if the, what's the last part of the question? As a community obligation, then there has to be, if it's known somehow that it wasn't fulfilled, then the leaders of that community have to make sure that it is fulfilled. A corollary to what uh, my, my brother said, so if you have prayed the Eid Salah and Friday, you said it's not necessary to pray Jummah or uh, not if obligatory. You, if you've prayed the Eid. Uh, no, if you have prayed Eid. So what about, I mean, you have to pray Duhar. Then, yes, yes, you have to pay that. Yes, yes. The congregation will be Jummah. It's better to be. You can't. You, there's no harm. Nobody will say to you you're doing something wrong in the sense of uh, praying Jummah. But the issue is here do you have to? You see? So we're saying you don't have to, but you still pray the whole. So good question, yes. Do you recite anything between the takbirs? Yeah, between the takbir, every time you say Allahu Akbar, according to the narration collected by Imam Tabarani and Imam Bayhaqi of Ibn Masood, what he used to do and what he would recommend to do is that he would make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like saying subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, and he would send salah upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's recommended to do that according to the author and those who agree with him. If uh, you bring in uh, Salat al Eid in the masjid, Praying Salatul Eid in the Masjid, Khilaf al Awla. It goes against the Sunnah, but it's valid. Is Tayyat al Masjid then required? If you come to the Masjid, yes. Tayyib, Zakullah Khair, may Allah bless you all. Ameen. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.